Hello, everyone, and when, uh, welcome to our ICAM Foundation webinar on upgrading from ICAM to Foundation to ICAM Camp Post. My name is Alex Gordon, and I'm joined by my colleague Daniel Wang to help me on presentation today. So today we're going to be talking about upgrading from Foundation to uh, Camp Post. Uh, what are the uh, uh, what are the new functionalities that you have access to uh, when upgrading to Campos and what are the advantages of using Campos compared to Foundation? And at the end of the webinar, we will uh, give you a brief uh, overview or, uh, of our uh, simulation package. So when you are upgrading to Campos, uh, basically one of the main reasons you would use it would be to uh, add more functionality to your app, uh, to your post, to your machine. Let's say you have a three-axis uh, machine and you want to add a trunnion table to it. With Foundation, you wouldn't be able to take uh, to manage that trunnion table for the toolpath. You would need to go to Campos and then add rotary uh, axis to be able to do that. So let's dive right into the uh, that upgrade and modification of the post processor to see how to implement uh, that functionality. So here we are in ICAM Foundation. We can see the small icon with the uh, clipped uh, icon at the top, uh, meaning we are in Foundation. I have currently a three-axis Haas vertical machine vertical machine like a VF4 or something like that. So right now, if we go in the general information and machine axis, the only options that I have for that machine is do I have a Z axis? If we look in the register, we do have the ABC register active because the uh, basic control uh, of uh, foundation is still using the same kind of information related that we use inside of uh, Campos. So here, that control support the ABC register, so we have it there, but they are not being used currently. If we look in the machine description, we only have access to the linear axis. So I want to use that pose I already created. This one is pretty... Uh, there's, it's not fleshed out at all. It's just a basic post that I created, but you would have your post that you created for your machine that has all your uh, customization that you want to have. I want to use that the same post and add on to it. So here in my program data, F3, uh, ICAM F230, I have the post that I just shown you. How do I uh, change that post to ICAM uh, CAM post? for V23. So I would open Campos V23. So on the desktop here, those three icons are for foundation and we have the same icons for uh, Quest, uh, Genair, Config. And then we have for the simulation, we have access to C run and PSE that we will talk a little bit later. So I would open Quest, which I already have open here. And I have already preloaded my uh, my database from uh, foundation. We can see this by the F230 here, and I have my Haas post. So I can open that post uh, just to show you it's the same post. We still don't see the uh, uh, the rotary axis, but we already see that there are some blank pages that appears. Those are new functionality that uh, Campos uh, support. So from there, the first thing I want to do is I want to generate my post to uh, V23 because as a normal user, uh, when you open a database from foundation inside of camp post, that database will be in read only. So you won't be able to generate uh, inside of that database. You need to uh, write to a V23 database. So this database here is my V23 database and I'm going to, override the post that I have currently. So if I look here, I have my Haas post. I could also take my post, drag and drop it over the, uh, the .dbf line. If I want to move it, if I want to completely transfer from 
a foundation to Campos, I could just move it and at the end remove the foundation database. Or if I hold the control key, I would copy it. We can see the small plus at the bottom right of the uh, mouse cursor. So uh, right now I did mistake and moved it by accident. Okay, so if we return here, the next step would be going to general information. And if we look in the machine access, we now have more options available to us. So if my machine had collinear axes, so uh, the U axis, V axis, or W axis, I could implement those just by clicking those, uh, this option, and then choosing which axis I wanna have. But for our example, we're gonna be adding a trunnion table. So here in the table section, does the machine has rotary tables? Yes. And now I need to select what are the axes uh, on that rotary table. If I if we take a look at the question, if it has only one sing, uh, single rotary table axis, then we need to use that uh, axis name. If I have more than one axis, so a, a real training table with a two rotary table, uh, two rotary axis, I need the the first one needs to be the axis on which the other axis will uh, set on. So right now, if we have a uh, Tronion uh, AC table. So my A axis will be tilting with the C axis that will be rotating on top of it. So I need to choose my A axis as my lowest rotary table. And then I would use the C axis as my next rotary table axis. And if I had a second add-on on top of it that would add a B axis, I could cho uh, choose it. But Right now, I don't have one, so I'm going to leave it to NA. And I'm going to click on OK. From there, we can go check the registers. And those ABC registers that we saw before that were not used are now used as axis AT for A table and axis CT for C table. And we can see in the machine description that we have a rotary axis. Uh, uh, page that is now available to us. If I could double click on that page, it was blank. Now it is with some lines, meaning it has been populated and we can take a look at what we have. So in the general uh, panel, we have what kind of motions we, we support, continuous uh, position, or indexing. Indexing will use the uh, the G code or M code to uh, uh, to output the A and C values for that one. Uh, if it, if you don't need a G code or M code to be able to position your machine, then you can use position over here. If uh, if you leave it in continuous, this means that you have a full five axis. Then we you know, we have which register it's be using, the resolution of that register, what kind of uh, what kind of unit system we're using, and the axis shift. So if you have your C axis that is shift by 15 degrees by default, you could enter that value and Campos will take that into the calculation. The output and movement is basically how we want to output uh, the the C register, the A register uh, with its value uh, and the basic behavior of the uh, kinematic for those, uh, for those uh, axes. Here's the maximum output in respect to 360 is mainly if you have a control, uh, if you have a rotary table that has more than 360 degree, but you are limited on what, uh, what kind of output you can have. You could, for if you have 360, of uh, of range, you could go from zero to 360, or you could go from zero to uh, 359.999. If you have more than 360, maybe it just go from zero to 399.99 and then return to zero and just keep incrementing like that. So with this question, you can uh, select the, the the kind of output you wanna have. One of the uh, one of the nice feature of uh, one of the nice option here is the travel check. Uh, you can select what is the minimum and the maximum 
of your rotary axis. For here, for the A axis, we're going to put plus minus uh, 120 degrees. Then we would put the feed rate for that axis, the maximum feed rate uh, in machining, and the, max, uh, the rapid positioning feed rate. This is mainly for outputting the correct feed, uh, feed code or uh, giving any error if you go faster than that uh, to warn you. Here at the bottom, you have the offsets for and compared to the center of the axis. So if you have a trending table that's sitting lower than the uh, tilt uh, axis here, the A axis, then you would have to put in off an offset in the Z value. On the C table, we have the same thing. Uh, the same options. Uh, it, we would consider on this example that the C table is infinite, so we will not uh, put a range. We'll just leave it there like that. And once I click OK, it is populated, everything is OK, and we have our good uh, or rotary axis created. From there, I can test my post. So here, I'm just going to close this one. And we can just test it out. And we're going to take a just a simple five-axis toolpath. It's a uh, two toolpath of 180 degree each to do a full uh, 360 and uh, at an angle. So here we're using Katia uh, App Source uh, for this example. And just from the options that we changed, click on Play, and we have our toolpath being created with our five axis. So if we take a look here, those warning is just that the uh, the feed rate cho uh, chosen for the linear axis uh, axes are uh, lower than what we are requesting. So obviously, if we look uh, take a look at the linear here, we are at 500 IPM and we are going at almost to uh, 2,000. So obviously it's saying that it's decreasing the value because of the limitation of the machine. So uh, there's some way of preventing that warning. And one of the way would be to implement what we call TCP, the tool control point, which is driving the tool tip, uh, the, mach the machine by the tool tip and the orientation. And the control will take care of managing the uh, feed rate internally on the machine. To activate that kind of uh, functionality, the TCP in our software, we call it the RTCP, which is a rotating tool center point programming. You just go to the advanced 5D machining, which is one of the new section that was not present in, in foundation. You go to RTCP and you click on available, and then you can choose the different options and enter the uh, code necessary for that one. For a Haas controller, this would be uh, 230, uh, 234. On a Fanuc would be G43.4 or 43.5. Siemens would be Trari and Eidenhain would be M128. Uh, so you would use those codes to activate uh, RTCP. And a little bit later, I will talk about the different commands that you need to use inside of the macros to be able to control the activation and deactivation of those features. So here it is set up. The second options that you might want to implement is the tilted work plane. Uh, we call it LCS, the local coordinate systems, which will be mainly useful on a head-head kinematics when you want to do drillings. Uh, because most of the uh, control needs to have the tool along the Z axis, uh, the natural Z axis, uh, Z axis of the machine to be able to use the drilling cycles. So if you want to be uh, using the drilling cycles at an angle, you need to use the tilted work plane to be able to implement that. So you go in the control description coordinate system, and then we have or basic planes, translation component of the uh, of the local coordinate system, or the rotation 
and this is mainly the one that we want to use uh, as our basic uh, uh, as our uh, lo uh, our basic local uh, coordinate system. For Haas, that would be uh, 268. If your uh, machine doesn't support uh, LCS, you might need to use uh, the dynamic work offset to be able to manage the rotaries correctly. For uh, for Heidenheim, this uh, would be plain spatial. For Siemens, would be rot and trance. And for Fanuc, would be G68 or G68.2. Here we have the options on how we want to do the calculation of the uh, the transformation. Uh, for example, a G68 would be using the axis where we would have our IJK and then a R coordinates that uh, are register that would say how much I want to rotate around the uh, resulting IJK vector that has been created. Or I have my rotation, which is three rotation that we would do uh, in RP, uh, for example, here in RPY, where we would rotate around the Z axis, the Y axis, and then the X, uh, the X axis. Or I could, it could be I want to rotate around the X first, the Y first, and then the Z, or using Euler angle, or if uh, those three options are not the one you want to use, you can go to custom and create your own custom calculation that you want to use. So those two features, uh, LCS and RTCP, needs to be activated through commands. For LCS, we have two ways of managing uh, the activation, either automatically through the post or manually through uh, other commands. If we go in other sections, we see here we have LCS slash auto. This is one of the commands that will uh, let Campos decide when the activation and the activation needs to be. And we have the three settings needed to be able to uh, control that activation and deactivation. We have here the code output by default. If we are using now, it's gonna be on the current motion. If it is next, it's gonna be on the next motion block. It's still gonna use the current location to calculate the uh, LCS transformation. However, the output will just be on the next motion. So to activate those, you would activate the, those two, uh, the LCS or the RTCP either in the operation event macro or in an op type macro. Uh, which is basically uh, uh, telling from the CL source when a new operation is starting or during a go-to macro, depending on whatever uh, situation and logic you have implemented. So to show you the activation of those codes, I'm gonna go in the operation event macro and do a custom macro and just to show you the, uh, the, the format of the commands. So for RTCP, uh, you go with mode slash tlvect for tool vector, and then either on or off to activate it. So so th uh, those are the possible uh, values. So for multi tlvect off, you would just go mode slash tlvect comma off, and that will turn it off. To, act, uh, to activate uh, LCS auto, you would go LCS slash auto comma on to turn it on and LCS slash auto comma off to turn off the automatic uh, activation and deactivation of LCS. Then if you want to control it manually, you have LCS slash now to activate the LCS uh, at the moment you process this line or process it with LCS slash next on the next motion block. And if you want to turn off LCS at any moment, LCS slash off will turn off the LCS and output the correct uh, G code or M code necessary to uh, turn it off. One of the, the last 
uh, one of the two features that you have uh, available also through a different license is the spline and high speed machining. Uh, those on today's controllers are uh, already managed through the controller inside the machine. However, high speed machining can still be useful if you want to take into account the acceleration and deceleration of the machine uh, to help on the calculation of the cycle time. Campos use a linear feed rate for the uh, calculation of the cycle time. So that means between two motions, uh, the feed rate, if you have a, a feed rate of 50 inch per minute, from the start to the end of that feed rate, it is at 50 inch per minute. Using high speed machining, we would use the the uh, acceleration and deceleration to make sure that your uh, the real motion, uh, the real uh, feed rate is being used at all time. The final uh, feature that you do not have in foundation is the angular head support. To activate an angular head, you need to do two things. You need to set it up inside of the uh, tool section, tool change section. I would go to the head section and activate the head attachment. And then that means the post will, uh, will now support uh, angular head. The second thing that we need to do is to uh, tell the post the definition of your angular heads and then load up the tool using the incorrect angular heads. I'm gonna show you the different commands that you need to use for that one. So here you have two types of commands. You have the tool no slash holder and then what's the holder name? So you give it an, uh, an ID. Then you give it a, uh, a vector definition, either using the angles or a tool vector. And then if you have any offset in X, Y, Z compared to the new control point, huh? of the holder, then you would need to enter those values. So the XT, YT, and ZT are, would be the offset from the spindle control face to the new tool control uh, point that we have. And then when you are ready to load a tool inside of your app source, it would need to read load slash tool, comma, your tool number, comma, your older, comma, the ID of the older, and then Campos will know that this tool is using an angular head using, for example, a tool vector of minus one zero zero. And then the output of the NC codes would be different uh, and match the correct orientation needed for that, uh, for tool point, uh, the tool tip to go exactly to the place where you need to go. So in terms of post functionalities, this is pretty much the, uh, uh, what's new that you have available to you. Uh, for the other advantages of using Campost, I will uh, let Daniel tell you more about it. All right, thank you, Alex. And, you know, as I was saying, there's, um, those were not just all the, the advantages, you know, there's a lot more advantages, but we're just scratching the surface here. Um, you know, like you mentioned, um, you're able to add additional axes, um, more than your two axis lathe and your three axis mills that are offered in foundation. You can add different uh, combinations of heads and tables or, um, you know, collinear axes. So that's one of the advantages of upgrading to, to our full developers package. Uh, but you also have the available um, different machine types. Um, if you opening in foundation, you only have um, contours, mills and, um, lathe machine, but with our full software, you, you're able to create mill turns, uh, you know, punch presses, uh, EDM machines, and even um, step into robots. So you're able to have a starting point um, of different machines, in addition to adding additional, uh, more um, axes, whether it's a head tables or just the standard linear axes. Um, so you have all these additional features that, um, adds on to the complexity of your machine if that's what you need. Um, and then you also have what we call the um, optimization features, which are under the uh, smart pack, uh, as we call it. And if you want more information about that, um, you can visit our website um, at, at icom.com there, where 
um, you will learn more about all our optimization features to reduce uh, programming time and uh, even cycle times. Uh, but this would be out of the scope of this uh, presentation. Um, but just as a side note, we do have some optimization features. Um, but more interestingly enough, um, when you go to our full software, you also get access to simulation. And our simulation comes in um, two different packages. We have what we call the integrated machine simulation which is um, simulation with the Pulse processor and G-code emulator, which is simulation with the G-code uh, G emulation. Um, in short, the integrated machine simulation is a simulation using uh, a CL file. So you would be posting and, emulate and simulating what you're posting. And a G-code emulator is, uh, is using an NC file, so G codes and M codes, and then simulating those codes. Uh, we also have a um, third package, which which is a combination of the two, um, but generally we would go with um, one or the other. And today here, I'm just going going to go through uh, our integrated machine simulation, and I want to show you guys what we call. Uh, an application that we have called the extractor. And the extractor is very powerful. Um, it allows a one click uh, or a, a allows you to go from your CAM system to simulating our software, uh, simulate uh, to simulation from one click of a button. Uh, uh, and this is available in many of the CAM systems that we support. Um, I'm going to name a few here, Katia, um, V5 or 3D Experience, Mastercam, um, Siemens NX, and PTC Creo. Um, if you want a more extensive list, again, please visit our website. There's a list um, that will tell you uh, which one has access to the extractor and which ones we support. Um, and today here, we'll, we'll do an example in Katia V5, where we'll be simulating, uh, pulling all the information from Katia into our uh, simulator so we can start simulating and also show quickly um, some of the advantages or some of the neat features from our simulation. So here you guys, um, we have a, a CATIA part. Um, it's our, it's our standard art to part here at ICAM. Uh, we have a fixture, a stock, and our design part. And we'll be running what we call the extractor. Now, the different CAM system will have their different um, integration, and it will have a different way of um, launching the extractor. Um, in Katia here, I'll be running a macro um, that will launch the extractor. And this will be the interface that the extractor will have. Um, we'll just give it a minute here to extract all the information. And this interface you see here is what, like I was saying, is the extractor. This will be the same interface across the CAM systems. Um, so if you have multi-CAM, if you have access to multiple CAM systems and you want to do this for all your CAM systems, then you know that learning it once, it'll be the same for all your other CAM systems. Um, and we can see here with the click of a button, I have access to the my post processor, the simulation, um, and all the different important information that are automatically pulled from my CAM system. Things like the stock, um, what my fixture is, uh, and my my th uh, my part, uh, tools, the holders, etc. You know, all these will be generated um, automatically. You can always generate manually um, the STL files for all the parts and fixtures and import them in the simulation. Uh, but using the extractor, you're able to do this automatically. And then we have the additional uh, features here, but I want to point out um, the mode here. Um, like I was mentioning previously, we have two or three, which is um, the combination of the two um, different simulation. So we have the general kernel, which runs the post with the simulation. And the C run is the G code emulator where we would be reading an NC file um, and then simulating it. Uh, and then we also have access to um, MRS, which stands for material removal. Um, so you can actually machine apart. So let's see um, when we hit the gener here, 
we'll be launching the standard gender launch panel that you've been working on throughout the foundation and it's the same. Um, you can verify your information here, select the kit, etc. But we'll just go OK and launch the full uh, gender interface. <clears throat> and so with a click of a button, I went from my uh, my cap process, uh, my programming in my camp system to now going to post and simulate um, without any hassle. And you can see quickly here, um, it's very similar to just post processing with the additional of this nice virtual machine uh, window, where now we have, you can see that I have some kind of machine um, with uh, trunnion tables that I'm able to move in 3D, right? So I can go above, I can zoom in, zoom out and all that. Uh, I also have the display window here. I will talk about that in a minute, uh, but you see that I have my fixture, a stock, and also my design part. So all that information was automatically um, pulled out from your system and then put inside of our simulation world. A um, couple things to note here is the controller. Um, we also have the controller window available in posting, but you may only see things like the code group and the PP fun window. Um, now we have access to additional information. Um, and the two that are really interesting to look at are the axes and the timeline. Here we're able in real time to jog our axes. So I'm moving the X, you know, moving the Y axis, um, you know, rotating my table. Uh, right, we won't be able to see the C axis here, but you know, I can rotate the table uh, just to see how my machine looks like, and then I can reset and start, you know, posting and simulating. And you can see that the display window is updating in real time. You know where I am. What's my feed rate, if my coolant, what's my spindle, um, you know, what's my fixture compensation, et cetera. All this is simulating live. Um, here we also have the option to, you know, make things go a little faster, um, you know, run in real time by changing the speed of the simulation. Um, there's a lot of really cool features um, that I don't want to go in depth here, uh, but if you were to, uh, if you're interested in going more in depth, um, then we also, we can, uh, you can contact us for a, for a personalized demo or just an overall demo to show you the power of our, our software here. Um, now, I don't want to run through the whole simulation. It may take quite a long time as the toolpath is, uh, is quite extensive here. Um, but I want to go back to the timeline and just to show you guys that when we're post-processing, it's, it's time-based, right? You can see the time here. Um, and this is an approximation of the machining time. But what's interesting about the timeline here is you're able to go back to look at each and every motion. And just like we showed um, in some of the debugging methods, you can synchronize on the output, synchronize on the source, et cetera. You also, have the, you also are able to synchronize on the timeline and kind of look at where something is happening. If you have a collision or if you have an over travel, you can see exactly what's happening. And by drag, dragging a timeline, you can see exactly what the motion is. Um, looking at the display also, you see the exact, what's happening at the exact time, uh, what's the motion that's being generated. And then you can go back to your cam system or you know, do the, that kind of debugging. So that's really the power of, of our simulation here. Uh, and that's what you gain when you're going from a foundation developer to a full campus developer. Uh, and, you know, we can start running it from here and now I'm posting or I'm simulating from a point that was already processed. Um, and that is true for not just our integrated machine simulation, but also for our um, G code simulation, right? You can do the exact same. The only difference is, is the input file is a, a G code instead of a CL file. Um, so we're just going to run this through, but you know, that's, uh, that's really all the advantages of going from a foundation uh, developer to a full campus developer. Uh, and with that being said, that's all we had to show for today. Um, so if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask them now. If you guys want more information about our developers package 
or any other information on the optimization features, or if you want a demo, um, feel free to contact us uh, with the information on your screen right now. Um, or you can also visit our website at uh, icam.com uh, to get more information. So thank you very much guys for attending. And as again, as always, stay safe. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us so we can help you on uh, achieving what exactly you want to achieve inside of post-processing. Have a good day and hope to see you soon.